Hey, what's up, guys? Another episode of the Genesis Thought Lab podcast. Uh, third one we recorded, or I don't know if it was the third one. It's probably the third release that we'll do. Um, yeah. Astral Harvest 2016. This one was just kind of opportunistic. We just grabbed a couple of the boys working for PK. And Literally saw them walking by in PK yeah. shirts while we had our stuff set up looking for something to do. And we were like, hey. And actually, for the first time, this was when that worked. Just being like, you, <laughs> you, sit. And it worked. And we just recorded a quick episode. So Yeah. That being said, if any of you cats are going to be at Astral Harvest or uh, Motion Notion, Oregon Eclipse, Shambhala, if you see us set up, you want to talk some shit, sit down with us, yep. have or a just cool story. Through our website, just use the contact tab. Yep. And like, if you want to, if you think you have something cool to say or a friend or just like, you know, it's, it's not all about the artists or the, mm -hmm. the core elements, man. Sometimes it's nice just sitting down with other attendees. So yeah. if you have a project that you're working on that you'd like to promote, doesn't have to be the... I don't know. Our episodes tend to generally long or run a pretty long time. Yeah, but, but I, we, I'm, there's no limit. I'm not we afraid this year to do some, you know, 15, 20 minute ones just to, yeah, just for plugs. Yeah. So if, yeah, if you want to be involved, come plugs. hit us up. If you want to check out all of our other podcasts, of course, it's on genesisproject.com. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a Patreon, which is the, the primary source of us being able to do this thing. So patreon.com slash the Genesis project. Yeah. You can subscribe for a buck an episode. It's literally less than coffee for sure. Mm -hmm. And it really helps having a tiny militia of people that really help us advance this project. Help us do what we do. Yeah. Yeah. What else? Uh, Schwack City. Schwack City, bitch. Schwack, Schwack City. No? <laughs> yeah, our good friends have put together uh, a website called schwackcity.com, and it's a, an amalgamation of all the festival vendors and all their crafts, as well as international and just general rave supplies, festival supplies. I just keep wanting to push the inflatable T Rex. I want to see yeah. like I want to see an army of inflatable T Rexes at we festivals. Have. Yeah, but I mean like three doesn't really count as an army. In some countries, it can. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So if you check out their site, schwackcity.com, uh, you can use the promo code Genesa, get a little bit of a discount, mm -hmm. and stock up. Yeah. Get your shit. Get your shit together. Yeah. This summer. We also have a GoFundMe campaign going to try and recuperate. Uh, a, a piano that was consumed by a speaker falling at our last event. Monstrously. Yeah. I mean, Stephen is a champ. He's an incredible, uh, incredibly talented, well, multi just, I was going to say pianist, but yeah, he plays every instrument in the friggin' world. But he's a piano teacher, a music teacher, and his piano got savagely smashed during our last show. And we're just trying to get that back in his hands so that he doesn't have to, you know, so that his students don't suffer, really. And I, like, I hate yeah. the fact that it was at our show that it happened, but um, we're going to pick up the tab on whatever we can't crowdfund, but we're just looking for some help because the, mm -hmm. you know, right before summer, some, yeah. some financial drops have, have hurt us. So, well, and what he does for the community, especially when it comes to students and teaching kids and stuff to, to learn music. It's it, like that literally speaks for itself into his, his, yeah. his passion, his connection to the community. Yeah, so, so we'll, we'll have a link in the, in the notes. Mm -hmm. Um, otherwise I guess just hit up genesisproject.com. I'll probably have it on the front page there. Yeah. We'll figure that yeah. out. Um, also Astral Harvest 2017, catch us on Saturday night at Waka Chan for the first time. I was, I was looking for a time. <laughs> 945 to 11, uh, just before K-Lab, which before is going to be sweet. Yep. Um, yeah, we overlap with Closey a bit. We're going to be running around like crazy. It's going to yeah. be an interesting night. It's hard to maintain schedules. Yeah. Festivals. Do you just wish you could clone yourself and be at like mm -hmm. four stages at the same yeah. time? <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> Let's start a... No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, we'll stop talking your ears off. Uh, enjoy this episode with a couple guys from the PK Sound crew who are some of the backbone of everything that happens up here in Western Canada. So... Fuck yeah, PK. Fuck yeah, PK. All right. Enjoy, guys. See Hi. you.
bullshit before everything starts. Yeah. Okay. And welcome back to the Genesis Thought back. Lab podcast. Oh, the sun is so hot. That's why I have an umbrella. <laughs> we need to get a fucking canopy. Oh, that cloud is really nice right I know. now. Yeah. It's perfect timing. That's so you, heaven. Dust, <laughs> Dustin. Yeah. Dustin Cool. You is it cool? Dustin Cool. Yep. Cool. You uh when did you start working for PK? I started September first, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, how so this you, is my first. How did you get roped into that shit show? <laughs> well, you know, apparently I'm the first person to ever apply to work with PK with a resume and get hired that way. Okay, so I was going to oh, say, really? I'm sure a ton of people apply for PK in the first yeah. place. Yeah, yeah, but most people that work there, it's all friends of friends and, right. oh, I know this guy from way back Ex- when. Except for the people that like really count, the people that are just like yeah. really pioneering the, the actual brand and the, yeah, yeah. like... Which is the most impressive part about, and the part that I appreciate so much about, like, we live in Calgary, we live in this this awesome city where we have PK Sound, who yeah. not only is, like, winning innovation awards and entrepreneurial awards and, like, just killing it, but is also, they, they're, they're, you know, everybody at PK is coming out to the shows, they're all there. Yeah, they're it's actually, such a like, family. Uh, well, even yeah, yeah. Dan, Dan was saying, like, it was a good example, like, if you have a speaker that blows, like, at 9 o'clock, you can have it repaired and working at 11.15, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. You have the people that built the speakers in yeah. the crowd. Like, I got this. Yeah, <laughs> it's super cool. We're, we're really lucky. Yeah, I'm Kirk. I'm, I'm just, Kirk. I'm just volunteering for the just for, this, for this show. You're yeah. wearing the yeah. shirt. You matter. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but the shirt on, it just like blend right in. People, yeah. You know, Is this your first time out here at Astral Harvest? Yeah, Astral Harvest, yeah, it's yeah. the first time. I did the Shambhala a couple times, and yeah. I'm gonna volunteer there this year. So what a excited. production Shambhala is. That's yeah. gotta be. Have you worked at Shambhala yet? No, you, you no. started September, right? Yeah. So this will be your first yeah, Shambhala. Yeah, my first festival season. We uh, we help build like pre build the stage for Pagoda and like one thing that I've noticed when it comes to like the pre-built stage crews is that like people who work for the village you can tell they work for the yeah, village people yeah. who every, work for the living room of the Apathy every you can crew tell has that they're a part of this crew feel, the Pagoda yeah. crew is such an eclectic mix of like not only people that hate house but like people that just like don't really fit in with it's any an other crew, crew. Yeah. yeah really yeah. Yeah. I feel like if you work for the village you love drum and bass, no questions asked. Yeah, right? you either love drum and bass now, or you're going <laughs> or, to love drum and bass. Like, yeah. <laughs> but, like, and then the pride that does the living room stage—they're—they're yeah. they're yeah. very like kind of underground, secretive crew that like they're. I feel like they've got shit dialed. They're, they're a really solid band of humans, and they yeah. do their thing. Yeah. Um, that just reminds me. Last night I was talking to somebody about how like. Side trance, like, is kind of related to cilantro in that, like, either you love it or you hate it. Like, there's no middle yeah, ground. Like, you'll grow to love drum and bass eventually, but like, when it comes to side trance, like, you either fucking love it or you hate it. People love or hate. You cilantro. may be genetically no predisposed yeah, yeah. to hate side trance, <laughs> or you may not know that you love it, but all of a sudden yeah. you're just like, oh, that's what that is. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, like, I can cool, do that. I'm down. Yeah, I can do yeah, that. When I was drunk, and now I'm down. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you guys excited for anything this weekend here? Uh, I'm, you know, I'm kind of just uh, taking it all in. This is my first time here. And it's not your first festival, though, is it? No, could you no. imagine? <laughs> <laughs> Be like, I'd like to work for PK. I've never been to a festival before. <laughs> I hear they're just a hoot, though. <laughs> real good time. Yeah. Well, this is a this is a good example of Astral Harvest, though. Like this, yeah. I think it's the first time I've seen it this capacity. This like, like even for Thursday night, like there's twice as many people here. Or there for Thursday night as there was last yeah. year. Yeah, there was a huge crowd. Yeah, it seems like there's a good group of people around. Yeah, uh, I haven't even seen the full place yet. There's like multiple stages. I've only got here and. And there's like multiple yeah. other stages. Well, and for the most part, we've got the interstellar elevator, which is main stage, and then we've got Waka Chan, which is the the secondary main stage. Really, yeah, it's the, the, the two right main there. features, right? Oh, okay. the, the market stage here in the vendor area is sort of like I don't know how to define that. Last year, the wheelhouse crew in Edmonton was the one that was hosting that. But then oh, this really? year, they they I guess they pushed forth and they were like, we want to do like an actual stage. So the manor, apparently, which is like it's fashioned after like partying in the house or something. I haven't even been over there yet, but well, that's kind of cool. There's yeah, a new stage over in the tree tonight. line, which I'm wondering how effective it's going to be because it really is off the beaten path. It's not yeah. really. But for people who've been here before, like that's going to be like yeah. a super curiosity draw, you know? So like, there's yeah. the going four on official there? stages yeah. this year because we've also got Angelica's bath. At Angelica's Basket, which is where over here. And then there's the beach stage too. Have you guys oh, seen yeah, the beach yet? Beach, no. beach is a renegade no, so stage. We've been here for yeah. about an hour. Oh, pretty, okay. much, pretty much from here to you know from there to here. Yeah. Slowly. Well, the, the river, the river, kind of like 
borders the whole property and comes around even behind main stage. So oh, wow. cool. people it's, jump in the river and stuff yeah. and oh, yeah. just chill Definitely. out. Right? Apparently the river's super high this year. I haven't yeah. seen it, but like there's oh, the, not like that regular like lower beach. There's like kind of like a group of people like you have to like crawl through them to like get down yeah. to it. This is where they host uh, North Country Fair. Yeah, I so heard that. This yeah. is the land that, like, North Country Fair, I think, doubles the, this capacity. Yeah. Really? I think they get, yeah, it's it's really saturated. Astro Harvest sells a certain amount of tickets, like, on purpose to, yeah. like... Yeah, like Base Coast. Yeah, just like, this is the number we're working with yeah. so that we know that our porta potties are going to hold up for yeah. 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 people and, like... 5,000 or... 4,000 here. 4,000. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, they didn't sell out, uh, I think, until yesterday. I think they... they I heard they sold out at the gate. I heard they sold out, but I that's don't know just where. whatever. That's hearsay. That's yeah. just been floating around, but it feels like it. This yeah. is a yeah. pretty solid. Well, it looks it attendance. looks pretty packed going through the camping area. Like yeah, there's, totally. There's not much room to breathe over there. Well, and that was the thing about last night. It's like there's so many people here, but it's only Thursday. Like, yeah, more are coming. <laughs> yeah, more are coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Saturday night, like. I think Dub Effects is playing in Edmonton this weekend, and I, and I know some people were actually gonna like hang back and catch the Dub Effects show in Edmonton That's and then drive out to Astro. Mm-hmm. Really? So Saturday night usually gets pretty bonkers out here. Yeah. What nice. um what is your like what are your duties this weekend? Like what's what is it like uh, working a festival behind the scenes for your position? Well, I just kind of brought some extra gear. Yeah. So I'm just kind of backup. Just in case anyone in case. needs a break, yeah. so... Oh, you can tell a better story than that. Yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really just hanging around. Yeah. <laughs> Sweet. I'm actually sober wearing a ticket. mask. Yeah. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> I grew a foot. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Jared doesn't hear that. <laughs> what about you? You, you just... Uh... Uh, yeah, no, I'll, I'll move stuff, but other than that, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, for the most part... I have a man with arms. Yeah, just doing what I'm told, really. I don't need any help to do anything. Yeah, so, like, warming, yeah, up to, just, warming up to be village crew. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's right. Yeah, a little little pre-village. Oh man. Yeah. Best thing I saw like posted on Facebook from Erica uh, like after the last Game of Thrones episode just came out, she was like, I swear to God, if anybody spoils this for me because I haven't seen it, like, you will be banned from the village. Yeah. You will not enter our stage at all. <laughs> That's hilarious. Extending <laughs> Shambhala <Yeah>. leverage. <laughs> Which is fair because I didn't see the last episode until Tuesday. Yeah. And even all day Monday, I'm just like, I can't go it's on like the anxiety. Internet. Yeah. I'm we not were, going on Reddit. We just came from uh, Inshallah last weekend and like six hours after the episode came out, it was like five or six we in the morning and like using battery our battery up. for our podcast. <laughs> I just like plug off in, phone and streamed off, it. Off the Wi Fi. and That's when you yeah. get that text message. You've up, used up 100% of your. Yeah, I, yeah. Definitely, I definitely did. I, I had the 90% message like yeah. before I did that, and I was like, yeah. fuck it, it's worth it. In the opening, yeah. in the opening <laughs> credits, you're it's like, like yeah, 6 it's o'clock in the morning, <laughs> and we're like screaming. I'm like screaming in our trailer time. I was like, you're going to wake people up. I was like, I don't care. Look, like, shit happening. It's the best show that's ever been made yeah, yeah, on television. It's true. It's unreal. Yeah. It's so true. The did writing, you see it? Do you follow it? Uh, okay, I'm like three episodes behind, so I haven't seen the fun finale yet. Okay, so but it was like an emotional roller coaster the whole way through. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> well, the thing is, like, the, the last two episodes of this season that just happened yeah. literally redefined the whole fucking series. Wow. Yeah. Like, it's so yeah, the whole, profound. The whole landscape changed. Yeah. yeah. And Which like, just no, makes you excited for the next season. Yeah. No oh. spoilers at all, but, like, the way that the last episode plays out, it's like. It's almost like they hired a different director. Like, it doesn't even feel like a Game of Thrones episode for the first 20 minutes. Like, well, different, super dramatic music, like, barely yeah, any yeah. dialogue. Like, apparently, they, they do hire different directors for different episodes. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. So, really? I did not know that. Yeah. It's really strange and to think about that. Like, a different. Yeah. Like well, same thing with, like, Breaking Bad and stuff. They yeah. have different, like, yeah. the oh. same three directors, but they alternate sort yeah. of thing. Yeah. They take turns writing the story, which is kind of cool because, that is cool, yeah. like, one guy will write one or two episodes at a time. And then the, you pass the torch. So there, like, even for the writers, there's a bit of a surprise element. Yeah. And like, by the time you get back to like, okay, the pen is back in your hand, yeah. you have to assess the situation and, and figure out where you're gonna go. Yeah. And it, well, the thing is with Game of Thrones is that we've heard that um, all of the directors and writers know where it needs to end. Yeah, yeah. George R. R. So they, they yeah. have the they have the end point, but they're allowed to go in whatever. Like direction they want to get yeah. to that point, well, and, and he, George, he's also George like Martin an associate. is going to like go he's... on his mm-hmm. own path for the books. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. regardless of what the TV show does, he's still going to write his own story. Yeah. He's probably going to die before he finishes. Oh the books. no! Don't say that. <laughs> he's a great big older man. He's like wishing yeah, death he's... on a legend. I'm not wishing <laughs> death. No. Okay. You know what? He brings death upon all of the characters. He's killed so many people. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Every time something happens, you're just sitting there like he's like, going to really? die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
It's nice Sh- that they have that uh, three that, that competition between the directors too. It'd be yeah. like a you know yeah. like just like you just smash an episode. You just look at the other director like yeah. Follow that up, <laughs> yeah, dude. What you got, boy? Like, yeah, well, one thing that I really recognize. I don't know if you guys have seen like the Hunger Games movies or anything like that. I've seen we, the first uh, one. Except for the last one. Yeah, we saw the first one, and then his mom gave me the books, and I read through the books and realized that like the first one sucked and yeah. could have been so much better. But then the second one, they brought on a different director, and it kicked ass. The third one. I'm pretty sure it was also a different director. Same thing with all the Harry Potter movies. Like, it's yeah. different directors all yeah. the way through. Like All the yeah. Star Wars movies. Well, yeah. the older Star Wars movies. Well, all yeah, different directors. Shout out to The Force Awakens. Oh. <laughs> that actually was probably one of the most <laughs> enjoyable <laughs> films that I've gone to see. I like, don't even it, have I, my beer. I felt like I wanted to jump up out of my right? seat and just be like, yeah. I, like, didn't, I didn't want to watch the trailer for uh, Rogue One oh, really? for the longest time, but then I went to see... Uh, the new Captain America, and of course and the trailer was there. It's oh. the, the trailer. Not watch it then. The trailer is fantastic. What has been so seen excited. cannot be unseen. Cannot be unseen. <laughs> the trailer for Rogue One is. Like, I, I, almost, I was more seen excited it. I don't for see that it. than I was. I don't think I've ever had such a raging nerd boner. Yeah. In my entire life. <laughs> well, that's the I'm cool trying thing, to like, combine those words like nerd. <laughs> for the noner. For the listeners. For the listeners that don't know, like the Star Wars, like when Disney bought Star Wars, they mapped out like a. A progression of films. There's episodes seven, eight, and nine. But in, but between, in between, each year, each year in between, they're tackling um, the an story an, of Han Solo, an anthology. And like, so they're doing Rogue One, which is the story of the rebels that stole the plans for the Death Star yeah. to preface the first movie. Yeah. And then they're also going to do a Han Solo anthology to tell the yeah. story of what happened in his life up to the point where he was sitting with Greedo in the in the cantina. Yeah. And then they're also doing Boba Fett, which, I mean, Boba Fett was a really integral character, and apparently in, in all of the lore and the universe, he was very important. Yeah. But, but not he like never really got that way. much... Like, it, he just kind of... He was there and he died. He got swallowed by a fucking and big hole in the ground. I remember when I tried to show you the movies of Harry Potter and like the first <laughs> the bad. first number of movies, like I grew up with Harry Potter, so like aging at the same age that the characters do, like growing into being actors and stuff. Looking back on those movies, like the acting is shit. The plot <laughs> devices are, well, what are we gonna <laughs> do now? That sort of yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. Like shit, where was I going with this? <laughs> You're talking about showing me the movies and how bad the acting was. I know, but then before that, I had a point to make. Dead end. Mm. Oh, damn. <laughs> Daniel Radcliffe and how he just can't grab his sanity. Yeah, back he's in. I saw a trailer for this new ridiculous movie Where that he's was, in. Where the like Swiss Army Man. Yeah, like he's, oh, really? he's, got, he's got like this like boner that you can wish on or something like that. I can't even remember. Oh, okay, movie. wait a minute. The most ridiculous like thing I've ever seen. <laughs> or, no, 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 no. His farts are magical or something. It seems like Radcliffe. Well, this is just getting more ridiculous. I'm not even joking. It's a real thing. Is it a magical boner or a magical <laughs> fart? It's one of those making this shit up. I'm not even. Daniel Radcliffe. Like, no, he wouldn't. Yeah. Can it you imagine like, someone like him of his of his of his resume to accept like read the script and no, be like, yeah, I sure. saw it though. I'll do this. <laughs> I saw it. It's a real Every thing. actor has to have that. Fuck it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Sean Connery did a movie where he was a voice of a dragon. So yeah. Yeah. That's sure true. did. <laughs> Still know, boner for him. <laughs> oh, have you ever seen? Well, what's uh, thing? Do you remember that that film that we stumbled in upon at, at Burning Man last year that was playing on that screen? Oh, that, that was, like Ringo Star, Ringo from the Beatles, and it was like a caveman movie where Ringo was like the 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 main actor and and it was there's like no this, dialogue it's there was it was like silly like, fart jokes and no. like falling in dinosaur poop and like it was Ringo from the Beatles <laughs> was like, what am I watching like, I play the drums <laughs> <laughs> it was ridiculous I had no idea like what was going on and it was it was worthy of walking down the road and just stopping and I'm then like, you start watching and then you're just right like, like this isn't real is this happening how is this like someone pinch me right yeah, now. Yeah, I feel like most of Burning Man tries to yeah. pull that card. Well, that was projected yeah. on a screen where you could see from the reverse, kind of like yeah. that fucking. Have you guys? Oh wait, you guys just got here. So yeah, yeah. tonight, <laughs> Mario Kart. Over at that dome over there, Ooh. there's straight up Mario Kart. Man, Four players shoot. split screen. Just yeah. get out of town. <laughs> no way. Wow. Yep. What a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know what I'll be doing. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Astro Harvard stepped up its game this year. Like, there's so many more like. Not only even like art installations, but just like interactive yeah. shit like that. Yeah. And main stage, like the video mapping on the on the pieces along, like at, when it turns into night, it, it transforms so thoroughly. Like it, it doesn't even feel like the same stage. It's That's apparently awesome. like a crew from Mexico that does all of the 
like just yeah. the whole stage for them. Really? How many times you guys did, came here? Uh, this is our fourth this, year. No, fifth. Fifth? fifth? This is our fifth. We, this we is came our fifth in 2012. Year. I'm really bad at time. That's 12, okay. 13, yeah. 14, 15, and now 16. We just got married. I can hardly even remember the date. I don't even remember how long we've been together. <laughs> Nothing else even matters yeah. anymore. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Nothing even matters. <laughs> when, uh, what did you guys do before getting online with PK? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, were you like a. A Panago pizza delivery guy, or like, like <laughs> it's always fun asking, like, well, where, where did you corner? do before? No, I I went to school in Vancouver for a couple of years, yeah, uh, for audio engineering, yeah, and then before that, I was doing commercial AV, putting TVs on walls, which oh, was nice. just yeah. so fulfilling. You know? oh, I'm sure. <laughs> and before that, part of the whole oil rig thing, yeah, which you know, I still get Vietnam style flashbacks from that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The bills, but from, from this area, actually, driving around in whiteouts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Crazy. Good times. What about, what about you? you? An industrial mechanic by yeah. trade, so I yeah. do that. And then it's nice because I have the a bit of a contractor side, like the summer's off. So right. it'd be nice. Yeah. If, it'd be nice if they liked me more at PK and they could just pick me up in the summer. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm not working anyway, man. Like I'll come yeah. do stuff. Well, I mean, <laughs> to be fair, like you've made the first step. You're already on board. That's right. Yeah. You yeah, know your name and yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they know me. They a few of them know me by name. Actually, so it's to nice. be fair, like our our buddy Alex, the Russian, we call him. He's our like he masters our podcast. He does all of our sound for our shows, and yeah. he's been dogging Adam for months. He just keeps calling him. He's just like, give me a job. Give me a job. Give me a job. Now, Adam is just like, I can't give me a job now. But call me back. Keep calling. You know, he's yeah. like pressuring him to keep calling. And <laughs> yeah. I feel like he's on the threshold, but at the same time, there's only so much job to go around. There's, Yo, there's only so many He could have straight up taken Trevor's spot when Trevor like cut out a PK for that little bit and like was just like working. Yeah, it out. it's hard to replace Trevor though. Trevor's a fucking workhorse, like a machine. You guys know Trevor? Galore? Yeah. Trevor. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, oh, you, yeah, oh, well, he's, he's in set sales. last night. Yeah. Yeah, he, he left to go back. Well, he came from Axe to PK and yeah. then he went. He apparently like was overwhelmed by how involved he got with PK. Like he was he was a hustler. Like he, yeah. he made shit happen. Last year at Jean Bala, he was like, no, I'm not working for the village this year. I need to take a fucking break and just like he, hang out. Yeah. The thing is like he's I think he's addicted to being a badass. <laughs> <laughs> he, Are we all he can't, he can't stop like leveling up and, and yeah. being a badass. And eventually I think he just got to the point where he's like, this is actually taking away. Like I'm 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 suffering a little from how much I'm investing and I can't stop yeah. investing. So he well, went back yeah. to Axe Music and actually it was kinda cool because Trevor Grainier is the reason that Axe Music sells PK speakers. Yep. He was the one that lined up that contract. Oh, they and, also yeah. PK speakers. yeah they do. Mm -hmm. Yeah you go into the showroom at Axe Music they have PK speakers in there. Yep. And it was because Trevor has that relationship back and forth. Um yep. you don't find them on their website or anything. You have no. to go yeah. in to yeah, it's funny, them. like this little, like the speaker that we have here, like projecting our voices out. It's a clips, but we have like a little PK sticker yeah. on it. It's like, this is the new brand of like PK portable speakers, man. Oh, this is the one. That's a good segue. Uh, let's talk about the new brands, the new, the new models of PK speakers. The yeah. Gravity and the new... Uh, yeah, the Gravity 30 and the Gravity 218. The Gravity 218, yeah. yeah. Um, they're not ready yet, eh? I haven't even no. heard of these. They're, I've not? heard some no. teasing rumors that there's going to be some shit at Shambhala, but that's always, like, every year. What but are no. these? Tell these things to me. I don't know. I haven't <laughs> okay, even heard. Okay, the Gravity 30 is that, like, you saw Trevor had gone to Las Vegas to go, what was the con It was convention? Infocom. Infocom. Yep. Right. So Trevor went to Infocom and, and a, like, a bunch of other people. They had, like, a really beautiful setup, mm -hmm. and they had on, like, they featured the new products that PK is coming out with. And the Gravity 30 is a single 30 inch enclosure. And then they have the Gravity 218, which is the new dual 218, but it's like, it's aesthetically pleasing as fuck. Like they're it's, beautiful. It's beautiful looking. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that the, was it the DD30? Was it that yep. you guys have been working on for a while? Like that was Yeah, well that was kind of the, uh, like the test version of the Gravity 30. That was, they did have them at Shambhala. Yeah, right? and but that was they the kept year on that breaking. Andy C was there, and then the, I, I heard the pistons were going through the cones. They were yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, they were yeah. just destroying them. This is the fun thing, though, is like the, this is the R and D. This is the like this is yeah. science. Let's, let's yeah. try some new shit. Let's yeah. throw ourselves out there, make the mistakes, and well, that's, a master of the craft is one who's made all the mistakes, very, right? Yeah, so, yeah very cool. Yeah. They're being ordered in from. Listen, you're telling me the pistons were being ordered in from. Uh, yeah, well, they're from an Italian company. Okay. Yeah, and. Uh, we actually destroyed them, <laughs> but they, they didn't believe us. <laughs> so they, they, they are indestructible. Yeah, they, well, that's what they claim because they tested them with rock music. Uh -huh. not, oh, not oh. with you know bonfire twenty four seven. Yeah. And so they flew a couple of their technicians out. I think I was there that just day. to see like, oh yes, these are in fact broken. 
<laughs> it's like, here, I'll show you. Give me 10 yeah. minutes. Yeah. Just, like, I actually, I had an experience earlier, like over at the market stage, like watching this couple like play really beautiful, like acoustic music and like singing like harmonies and stuff like that. Like, I don't think I've ever actually seen PK speakers be represented in that way. Like, it's always yeah. just like yeah. bass and acoustic. electronic music, but like yeah. the clarity that comes from them in that regard. Like, I used to, uh, I used to work for Bose, like Bose, like speakers and like home theater and stuff oh, like sorry that. Oh, that. <laughs> it was actually a, it was a very, very, very interesting experience. But I, mean, I used like, to be a certified Bose installer. Oh, so. sweet! I'm we allowed got, to say that. We got some history, yeah. Oh, we'll, we'll talk later because there's some shit. But anyway, like when it comes to Bose speakers, like what Bose represents more is like like the clarity of sound like they don't represent like electronic music no, they and represent bass the as hustle. well they're, they're good at making yeah. you think that their product is the best in the market it is really yeah, good it is a really good product to be fair which is why I didn't feel they're as guilty for the way that they pushed me to sell things which I'm already uncomfortable they make a good with. product <laughs> they, having like, that experience over at the market stage like seeing PK speakers represented in such a fashion that is like super clear and super organic and super uh, acoustic is, is a really beautiful thing yeah well it's great to have a uh, a solid product and then you combine that with the, the techs that we hire yeah we yeah. just you know we uh have you guys are you guys out. from Calgary yeah. well, I'm from Stony Plain that's where you live no where you live <laughs> Calgary okay yeah. Did, uh, have you guys heard of the nightclub called Bespoke yes yeah yeah they have a they have the function one they have function one tops and then they just have like JBL subs oh, well, yeah. somebody actually told me recently that they are actually like an older function one sub yeah. base like, well anyways we yeah. uh but the only time that we ever went there like first of all like we were going to see Botneck like super crazy like Raging Electro super stoked on the artist yeah. but also the fact that like this is the only place in Calgary that has a function one system like yeah. Yeah. we've seen it at the Grove we've seen it at Burning Man like really amazing speaker technology yeah, it is. but apparently like they take a lot more to like maintain and like watch after like they're, more so than yeah, PK they're, speakers. Yeah, they're finicky. Yeah. Because they're, they're a really boutique speaker. Yeah. So they are they sound really great, but they require a lot of yeah. maintenance and So attention. when we went to Bespoke to see Botneck, like the sound was just... We almost wanted to leave. It was it so was bad. Awful. Yeah, it was awful. It was terrible. And it was weird. Like that kind of like super clubby environment, I kept on like running up to people just being like... Like, yo, doesn't this sound like shit? Like, Function 1 speakers are supposed to be better, and everybody's just like, no, nah, it's, it's great. amazing. <laughs> but at, uh, at Burning Man this previous year, at Uligan Airways, it's like a it's a 737 jet fuselage, and the stage is, like, in the cockpit. And they it's cut the cockpit out, and the DJ wow. puts So, like, there. you're DJing, like, in the actual cockpit of this plane, and it's super badass, but that's probably the, the, the most incredible representation of a function one system that I've ever heard mm -hmm. it was so dialed in it, it felt it just it's such a it competition felt, like yeah. PK or function one like <laughs> skiers or snowboarders like these people don't get along if you love one you can't uh, love the other <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not yeah. true yeah I did see someone actually just recently make a post on Facebook where they were just like all the fucking hype kids are into PK but what about this and what about this like there is a little bit of a weird brand name competition well there are a lot of people too because it's you know it's cool to yeah. like PK and everyone yeah. likes PK the hipsters don't want to like PK to be fair like totally. throwing shows yeah. in Calgary or even Shouldn't when um, matter, though. No. was it uh, was it Excision or Datsuk or something that was playing at Flame Central and they didn't have PK. No, that was Nero. Or yeah, that it was, was Nero, Nero and like everybody freaked out just being like, why the fuck don't you have PK? I'm not even coming yeah, and PK's yeah. there. And then they yeah, put PK that. on. Yeah. yeah. The thing about that show is that our subs weren't even turned on. They just wanted them for Crowd Barrier. Are you serious? And renting our subs was cheaper than renting Crowd Barrier. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't that tell anyone funny. I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll edit that out, I promise. <laughs> I'll just bleep it. Bleep, 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 bleep. It was weird. He stopped talking mid-sentence. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Well, but no, like, even, like, we, we, host, we host events in Calgary. Like, we bring headliners and stuff through our series, The Genesa Project. And, like, it is actually, like, a thing to, like, have yeah. PK. Like, yep. it's good the marketing. It's good it branding. It's not a thing to, like, look down on yeah. for, like, what, like, the name that PK has yeah. made for no. itself. Like they, actually, they actually just had something on CBC. I didn't actually watch the interview. I only saw it on our way out here, but yeah. Uh, for PK? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Jared was interviewed on CBC. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah he won the Entrepreneurial Award yeah. for uh, small business. Yep. Yeah. Is Fuck PK yeah. considered a small business? Yeah, well, we only have 25 full-time employees I guess yeah. well, but for even, Calgary and San Francisco. Well, yeah, oh, when we were when we great. were at Burning Man, like, uh, when, was it Camp Question Mark? Yeah, question mark. Question mark um, had a PK system, and they had their, their own names? techs from San Francisco. Those two guys. No, they were from Golden, BC. Yeah. The the tech. There was a guy and a girl. They were out doing. Oh yeah, that would have been uh, Brian. 
and Kaylee. That yeah, was them. And they that were at Fozzie Fest as well this yep. past year. They were yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, yeah. so rad. Cool. And like Kaylee was like running around with her little like tablet, and she's got all like everything <laughs> dialed like yeah. on her tablet. And, just non-stop like she just wouldn't put yeah. it down she's constantly yeah. she, running around she's a just like adjusting. she's a perfectionist yeah. yeah that's a yeah that's good yeah oh, that's what cool. a good company it, needs it's admirable right like you're yeah. sitting in the crowd as a as a participant and you're watching this person like you watch the the fabric of like the curatorship and the of, passion of what you're being delivered right like what's yeah. actually happening behind the scenes and it's yeah. kind of like i compare it to like you know you like see djs performing and they just kind of like stand up there yeah, and they just like don't do anything, do and then you see artists like Long Walk Short Doc, yeah. like the oh, so yeah. passion <laughs> and the Into flail. Yeah. And just, like, yeah. When you oh. see the passion and like any artist, whatever their craft, whether you're a painter, you're a sound technician, or a DJ, or whatever, like when you engage the crowd like that, it makes it such a different experience. Oh yeah, well it brings more energy to you, so you can create yeah. a little better too. Yep. Yeah, yeah. yeah. touch sure. down on an emotional basis. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. Do you guys work much in the states then, or do you guys get in there? Or work in the states no we like any gigs in the states i was like, born oh. there oh nice <laughs> no we don't i don't know like not yet what not we yet. do like for us mixing music like for me it's a it's totally a hobby it, i just fuck around it's it's really enjoyable yeah. mm-hmm. it's not it's not something i'm pegging as like i'm gonna go uh, well you already have a career mode, yeah right? like this is it's something that like i love hosting events i love like the community aspect of like even the podcast i, I just love doing all this shit digging in and, and getting my feet wet in all sorts of different areas but I'm, yeah. not, I'm not looking to make this my career it's not... way it's way more of a passion for me like I taught myself how to play the guitar at seven years old and like piano and stuff like I've always grown up with dreams of like performing in front of big crowds like I, I always knew this is what I wanted to do and like you know when it comes down to it you get like the super old school like vinyl DJs who like you know they do their thing to be fair i can't beat match for shit so i won't call myself <laughs> a dj vinyl. i'm yeah. a i'm an mp3j but like you know like getting into producing and stuff like that like i don't know yeah. technology is an interesting thing because like when it comes to like vinyl DJs, yes, there is a craft to it, but there's more so the aspect of you have to monitor what you're doing. You can't jump around because the needle yeah, will skip. Have to babysit the the motor it. doesn't spin at a constant rate. Like you have to yeah, constantly have to monitor constantly, yeah. like the BPM and make sure that everything's on point. Yeah. But when it comes to playing with the newer technology, like controllers and stuff, because you can sync up everything so much quicker, it gives you more of an opportunity to be that much more well, creative with the music that you're playing. I feel like a lot of people and like really separate it. Like, yeah. You're either a, like a DJ, like a disc jockey, if you like, but there should be a separate distinction almost for like MP3 just like a mix J. artist. I, right? you know, like, I, like I, I think it comes down to how your performance comes out rather than exactly your technique that you're using. Yeah. I think the technique kind of a is just for you. Right? Yeah. yeah. You're an orchestrator. You're up there just like trying to move a crowd. You're just yeah. trying well, to engage even, your audience. As yeah. an example, my dad way back in the day saw Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers live. Yeah which you would think would be a really ridiculous, like, you know, classic rock show. But he said that, like, the music was great, but they're just so boring. Like, they don't yep. do anything on stage. We just saw The Who. Performance shit. Yeah, mm-hmm. we just saw yeah, the, who the Who back in May. Wow. And, like, these guys are fucking, like, 70, 80, 80 years old, and Roger Daltrey's just still, like, swinging yeah. his microphone around. And, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's where you have the distinction between performers and recording artists. Yeah. yeah. You have guys that can right. just nail it in the studio. Right. Yeah. Well, and I've seen, they don't I've seen, like, People just being like, well, you know, like a real DJ can't jump around or like can't like flail. It's be- true. Be- it's true. If you're doing, yeah. if you're mixing vinyl, like you're you're very dedicated. You're like you're locked sure. into what you're doing. But yeah. I appreciate the connection that you make when you're sharing the energy and you truly passionately love the music that you're playing. I don't understand how somebody can just like sit up there and just. Yeah. That's why I really. It's Steve I mean, Aoki jumping around and yeah, and throwing cakes at people. Cakes at yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. It's like who's doing the music? I, actually, <laughs> I really would have liked to have caught the Joe Nice when when Blaine had him in town here recently. Like Joe Nice is apparently like he's a like very like roots like deep dubstep DJ, but apparently he his thing is like grab bag. He has like just buckets of vinyl of all these like crazy dub plates that nobody's got, yeah. and he just jumps up and pulls out like five six and hands them to the crowd and be like pick one and they'll yeah. grab one and then he'll fucking grab that one throw I it feel down. like that's and the kind of track, thing where like back to back he's just like here pick one here yeah. pick one if here, you pick have one. that is an artist that like, much yeah. vinyl and like that much to play with I feel like you would have to organize them in such a fashion that like you know what tracks sound good together in the first place and then those are the yeah. tracks that you bring out to the crowd and be like hey maybe I don't know maybe he's just an absolute unicorn <laughs> 
I mean, the thing that I enjoy doing when I play is just uh, kind of picking the next track randomly. Mm. You play and, as well? And making it work, yeah. But I did not know that. What is yeah. your thing? What do you go by? Easy D. Easy D? Easy D. I'll write that down. We'll plug you to mm. shit. <laughs> <laughs> Easy D. I haven't made anything new in a long time. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, like, for me, I, I picked up Virtual DJ one night and started messing about simply because I had gone to a show and I had seen an artist that was seemingly very busy mm -hmm. and I couldn't really put together, like, well, it looks like he's doing a lot right now, but I, I can't kind of pick out or, or figure out what exactly he's doing. Yeah. And I remember just being kind of frustrated and I was like, okay, I'm, I'm going to learn this. I'm going to go home and I'm going to figure out what's going on. I, I want to try and better... Um, connect with what the hell's actually going on on stage because yeah. like when somebody's playing a guitar or playing drums like you you see exactly you see what they're doing yeah, but you when you're DJing otherwise there's just like a table in front and they're just yeah. like looking there's down. a lot of like yeah. queuing up the track coming up next it's like you're very yeah. busy but you don't hear anything and I remember just being kind of confused at first I was like what's actually going on up there Yeah. like what's really going yeah. on and then I started mixing music and I remember I remember that night I remember getting like six or seven tracks deep and just being like this is fun Yeah. this is awesome like just there's something about it that's yeah. He, for Christmas, when we first started seeing each other as a Christmas present, he, it was all wrapped up, like, laid right out on the table at his parents' place. And I, like, had an imagination of what I thought it was, because, like, it was a Newmark NS7 controller, so it has the motorized platters and, like, you know, the nipples of it sticking one. out. Classic. And, like, I went up to it and I was like, there's no way. I slammed my hat down, like, on the top of one of the platters and, like, one of the pins stuck out. <laughs> And I was like, that's it. Well, the thing is, like, I started screwing around with Virtual DJ, right? And then yeah. I remember going to her and just being like, dude, this is fun. Like, I learned some things and I, I, I like, I felt proud. And then she was, she, she's like, oh, yeah, no, you, you fucked up this, you fucked up that. You <laughs> and she, all of a sudden, I had no idea that she, like, she had this knowledge base where she had been taught by a multiple, like, a bunch of her friends. She, like, she had the, the talent and ability to, to do things well. Yeah. But she never had any hardware. She never had any, like... Yeah. ability to fuck around with it and I remember seeing that and just being like oh shit okay I know I know it's get you for Christmas like, <laughs> like trying That's to fuel right, the passion yeah. <laughs> that makes everything easier yeah. cool. <laughs> and now here we are Astro Harvest 2016 yeah. Yeah. sitting in the middle of the field talking shit yeah. Yeah. drinking beer it's yeah, amazing time flies yeah. do you have anything to do tonight are you like are you off shift tonight or are you just on I'm call? just hanging around tonight yeah yeah yeah, seeing where things take me. Yeah. Do you have to work at all for the rest of the festival, like tear down or anything? No, no, I'm probably gonna head back out tomorrow. <laughs> so you've done your job. <laughs> now you're yeah. at the party. I brought the turntables. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Pretty no, much. Good. Pretty much it. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah go, go I brought the turntables, I got the t shirt. Yeah. What been there, more done do you that. want for me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go DJ at a birthday party tomorrow. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah I gotta go sweet. play a birthday party tomorrow. Yeah. All Not night. here? No. Where? Tomorrow's gonna Are be hype here. No, by Wildwood. Uh, <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I'm nodding my head like I know where that is, but yeah. I totally it's don't. Ah, yes, wow. Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> right beside uh, that river. Yes. <laughs> That's a nice river. My favorite thing at festivals is like, oh yeah, like, you know that one like white guy with the dreads? <laughs> like, uh, the yes. tattoos? Uh, yeah. Oh, He's got like yeah. tattoos. He's necklace. standing by that tree. We go way back. <laughs> I think I've seen that guy walking around. I actually had a moment, I think I told you about this. Uh, I work at uh, a golf course as a cook. And there's this one kind of older woman that I work with. She only comes in for Fridays for the buffet. Just like, she still gets paid, but like kind of as a volunteer. And she noticed that like I have like a list of like all of the weekends off that I need for festivals. She comes up to me. She's just like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Oh, we go to all these festivals. Like we play, we volunteer, we participate, or whatever." And she was, she mentioned this name. She's like, "Do you know Kieran or Keelan or something?" And I was like, "Well." I know a couple people kind of close to that name, like, can you describe him to me? And she's just like, oh, well, he has dreadlocks and he juggles. And I was like, okay, so that's okay. like, that narrows it down to like 20 people. Yeah. Can we expand then, on that description? But then at Inshallah last weekend, where we were just at, I went up to this guy, like, yeah, you dancing outside of the stage, just because he had like the most beautiful dreadlocks ever. I went up to him and complimented him, just be like, oh, your dreadlocks are really beautiful. He was like, thank you. I was like, what's your name? And he said the exact same name. I was like, do you juggle by chance? <laughs> what are the odds that I meet? What? that same yeah. white guy with the dreads. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you know that guy? 
There he is. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, the sun is so hot. That's why I got an umbrella. We need to get a canopy. <laughs> yeah, we need to like yeah. cover this shit. You guys got sunscreen? Oh, uh, totally. Yep. Gonna yeah. have to reapply yeah. because I am white. Yeah. You got, you got some. Well, actually, you're, you're you got some red. <laughs> Damn it. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> we came out here yesterday. I have like mad bandana tan from the last. Why are you wearing a bandana then? Because I'm wearing an umbrella now. Okay, okay, okay. But still, came out yesterday hey guys, just being like, up? Astral Harvest, it's going to be super sunny. Fucking rainy as shit. Are we live? Yeah. No bandana. Are we live? Are we live? Are we live? Right we're live, yeah. Oh, we're, we're so live right we're now. No way. Are you live? I'm barely. No, How live are you? That in the mic? Like, I got a braid a couple hours ago. Astral Harvest is the greatest thing in the world in the mic. <laughs> Astral Harvest is the greatest thing in the world! <laughs> Fuck yeah. What's what you're going to say in the mic? Uh, yeah. so I got it? Yo. In the mic! <laughs> <laughs> hey, Steven, I'm so awesome! Cool. All right, He's well. got two thumbs and likes the party. This guy! This guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I guess yeah, that's a good thanks. point to wrap that it up a, at. That was a great yeah. point to close it out on. <laughs> We'll sit down with that with Jordan here soon. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys. It was totally random just walking yeah. by. It was like, you guys. You guys want to talk some nothing. shit. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy talking shit. Yeah. <laughs> talking right. bad shit. Well, thank you. Yeah. You guys, thanks. man. Just, yeah. I hope awesome. you guys have a killer weekend. Yeah. Yeah. Harvest is one of our Especially favorite. now that you're not working anymore. No more responsibilities. Yeah, yeah just go explore and get drunk. Probably go find another beer. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Me too. I got one Do here. Thing. And I think that's like, we're out. Yeah. I ran out of beer, man. I have like five in my. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, this has Don't been another glorious power. episode of the Genesis Thought Lab podcast. We're <laughs> live, but not so live at Astral Harvest. I'm Callie. I am Tanner. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> Wicked confused. Right. <laughs> See you guys later. Peace out. <laughs> <laughs>